The US Air Force has enjoyed top dog status for a long, long time. But in the last decade or so, it has become clear the Chinese Air Force is very quickly catching up. This video will take a look at what the US Air Force has today and what makes it the biggest Air Force in the world. It will explore aircraft now in development that are to join the arsenal in the near future. But it will also analyze some issues that beset the Air Force, which might lower all those paper fleet numbers in an actual battle. Government-funded planes are nice and all, but have you heard about YouGov? They're sponsoring this video and I seriously did not know this was even a thing. You know how there are a bunch of US election polls in the media? Chances are many have been performed by YouGov. Basically, you apply with them and they send you polls on a variety of topics, from politics to pop culture. You complete their polls, giving out your opinion on stuff that matters and you get paid for it. I'm a sucker for filling out quizzes and polls, so this is right up my alley. And it's all done online. Whenever I have time to kill, I check if there is a new poll available and I can essentially earn money while I'm waiting at the airport, at the doctor's office or wherever really. Rendering videos, that can take a while. Enough for a few questions on my phone. The YouGov payouts are in 50 bucks batches, so I recently treated myself with a book on Chinese army aviation. Nice. YouGov is free to join and very easy to use to get some extra cash. So just tap my link below the video to take surveys and earn cash on YouGov. The US Active Duty Air Force, Air Force National Guard and Air Force Reserve have altogether quite an impressive 5300 aircraft under their belt. All three commands can and do provide combat pilots, aircraft as well as support planes. No other Air Force in the world comes close to said figure. That's because no other Air Force really projects power or assists its ground forces to a similar extent. The US vast fleet of transport planes is bigger than its two next competitors put together, while offering an even bigger payload advantage. That's because the US military wants to keep its numerous ground forces well supplied all around the world. An addendum to that are tanker aircraft which refuel other planes in air. The US Air Force has more such planes than all the other countries in the world combined, by more than two times. That's in part because the vast number of transport planes, support planes and an emphasis on intercontinental operations also require tanker planes. But the US combat planes as well benefit from tanker fleets like no other Air Force in the world. Fighting an air war from faraway bases using tankers or persisting over the battlefield again using tankers is something the US Air Force has ingrained in its culture, something that's been practiced for over 70 years. All other air forces only have a token tanker force by comparison. It has to be said that the US as a whole has more combat aircraft than just those 2100 listed within the Air Force. The US also has naval aviation and Marine Corps aviation. Those two together are more numerous than the Russian Air Forces. Even all of China's and Russian planes combined are less numerous than all of the US planes. Looking at the US Air Force by itself, it's still the most numerous Air Force in the world. One of our previous videos on the US Air Force losing the attack edge addressed some of the issues like the number of stealth planes, advanced radars and sensors on planes, as well as some weapons. So we won't go into too much detail on those in this video. But despite the pace of adoption of new subsystems and air-to-air -air weapons, and even stealth planes, the Air Force is still comfortably ahead of its only meaningful competitor, China. When it comes to stealth planes, despite the fact that the US is currently procuring fewer such planes than China annually, the fact remains that the US Air Force has been in the stealth business for a few decades now, and has accumulated quite a few airframes. It's not likely China will be able to match the sheer numbers of stealth jets in the next decade or two. Quality-wise, it's also not yet likely Chinese stealth technology is on par with the US one. Then there are segments where the US Air Force simply excels at. No other country or force invests in dedicated recon aircraft as much as the US Air Force. Though China is again somewhat close, the number and capability of US systems is still unmatched. The US is currently transitioning from its old E3 AWACS planes to newer models, yet to come. That's why there are relatively few air surveillance planes in the force. 
The U2 recon plane is still in service, capable of carrying unmatched sensors and doing recon work from 200 miles away if needed. To compare, China's manned recon jets are just derived from fighter jets, requiring overflight of areas of interest. The Air Force got rid of its battlefield surveillance planes, the famous Joint Stars. Today's technology, coupled with near-future AWACS planes, which will have the same capability and even satellite-based tracking, is enough to do the same job more effectively. The US Air Force is the only national force with dedicated stealthy recon drones. China's drones, for example, are big, and some are even supersonic, but they are not stealthy. RQ-180, for example, is so advanced and secretive that even its designation is just a guess. It was allegedly nicknamed White Bat. It has to be pointed out that naval aviation has additional platforms. That's especially important when we are talking about anti-air defense work. Some 160 Growler, Jammer and anti-air defense planes are navies, but would certainly assist the Air Force in any war. The Air Force has its own assets, but in the last few decades sensor technology has progressed so much that much of the anti-SAM network capabilities can be done with advanced fighter jets like the F-22 and F-35. Their sensors can geolocate enemy signal emissions, like SAM radars, and a variety of weapons can be used against those. Advanced radars can also be used as jammers, removing part of the need for a dedicated jammer aircraft fleet. The US is also a very heavy user of anti-radar missiles, though as said, the Navy is more keen on using such weapons. Curiously, the US has bought more harm anti-SAM missiles than AMRAAM missiles over the decades, showing just how little threat from enemy planes there was since the 1990s. The US Air Force also relies on a wide array of flying or towed decoys. Very few other countries in the world use such systems, with neither China nor Russia being one of them. Such decoys should increase life expectancy of a plane in contact with an advanced SAM system. Of course, not all is roses in the Air Force. One of the bad aspects we'll cover is aircraft age. The US Air Force, despite all the F-35 buys in recent years, is still mostly reliant on planes produced in the 1980s and 1990s. Sure, the bombers are even older. B-2s alone are on the average 28 years old. But bombers don't fly as demanding mission profiles and are designed to fly more. For example, the current plan is to soon retire B-2 and B-1, but to keep re-engined B-52s for a few more decades. But it's the fighter fleet that's more problematic. A fighter jet flying for 30 or 40 years is gonna have issues. Sure, over the years there have been some comprehensive life extension works on some planes, especially F-16s, where a good part of the plane's structure has been replaced with new parts. But the fleet is still too old. Due to the fairly slow pace of F-35 buys, the US has been keeping many of its planes in service for longer than it originally planned. With the Cold War over in the 1990s and 2000s, the Air Force was gradually shedding planes, but due to the desire to outmatch China, the Air Force has in recent years been increasing the total number of its fighters, even if that meant simply keeping old F-16s flying for longer as buying F-35s faster was not possible and or affordable. So what does all that mean? Well, many factors can affect availability or mission-capable rate. The US Air Force defines it as a percentage of time an aircraft can perform at least one of its core missions. The other part of the time when the plane is not available can be attributed to various reasons. Maintenance, sure, but also planes being upgraded. Also, new planes tend to require more time to solve issues that might arise until the system matures. Bigger, advanced and complex planes require more maintenance, to account for all of their features. And finally, old planes tend to require more regular maintenance just because old subsystems will break more often. It's apparent that B-2 availability over the years has been sort of steady but that B-1 figures have been sliding towards less than 50% mission-capable rate. B-52s, due to their sheer age, are also doing a bit worse over time. E-3 AWACS have slid down by quite a bit. F-15s have a similar issue. Their complexity also means they're less available than F-16s, which are doing somewhat better. F-22s have never managed to get their availability rates high. 
It seems Raptors were just too advanced for their time for all their features to work flawlessly and they require little maintenance. F-35s are somewhat better there, but still somewhere between F-15s and F-16s when it comes to availability woes. What all that means in practice is this. If the US Air Force manages to dedicate three quarters of its fleet against China, let's say 1500 jets, its 60% average mission capable rate will mean 900 jets actually being available for missions. Now comparison with China is tricky as China doesn't publish its mission capable rates. But from history it's known that rates above 80% are basically impossible for combat jets. Even the simplest and most mature yet new jets need maintenance. That being said, China's jets are on the average a bit less advanced slash complex and are definitely not as old. Using approximate production start and end dates and number of planes, one can deduce the approximate age of the fleet. And it becomes apparent that some 40% of the Chinese fighter fleet is under 9 years old. The US Air Force's fighter fleet is visibly older, with fewer than half the planes averaging 4 years old as China. And 5 times fewer planes being a decade and a half old. Of course, some US planes are simply more potent, like the F-22 and F-35 and to a small extent the F-15EX, which we didn't mention so far as there is a handful of those in service. But it's quite likely that those Chinese planes, being so much newer on the average, should enjoy better availability rates. Now whether that's 70% or more, that's harder to say as there's not much info out there. But at 70%, an 1800 plane strong Chinese fighter force after 300 planes have been subtracted for, say, being tasked with missions other than those opposing the US and its allies, would yield a sizable fleet, even bigger one than the US Air Forces. Of course, there's the US Navy fleet, which is outside the scope of this video, and there are other variables such as Taiwan's, Japan's and other fleets, just to maintain some semblance of context. So even the US availability issue, which is a bad aspect for sure, can be compensated for to an extent. There are of course other issues which might seriously affect the numbers on the battlefield, such as pilot numbers and availability of bases, but let's leave those for some other time. Also, before we go into the future, let's say that the Air Force has much more than just aircraft. We left stuff like the nuclear-tipped missiles and satellites out of the equation. US Minuteman 3 ICBMs, operated by the Air Force, are old and are getting a replacement missile. We covered that in one of our previous videos. Many satellites are also operated by the Air Force, and they're increasingly taking over the role of opposing force tracking. Previously, the US would use a dozen or two recon satellites to recon fixed locations. Today, whole constellations of sometimes hundreds of satellites are used to monitor areas nearly 24-7. Tests are being done with AI, to compile all such data and to do battlefield surveillance from space basically what Joint Star's planes were doing 30 years ago, but on a vastly bigger scale. The Air Force is also renewing itself through the new bomber and fighter jets. At least a hundred new B-21 bombers will get made, likely at an accelerated pace. Enough so they replace B-2s and B-1s by 2040. Those will provide a great improvement in the stealth department, compared with the B-2. They will likely add a bit of range, trading some payload for it. A next generation air dominance project is also being worked on, that's the 6th generation fighter, largely shrouded in secrecy. It should start replacing F-22s and F-15Cs from 2030 or so. According to the Air Force, only some 200 airframes might be procured. But that's because unmanned wingman planes will be joining it, to fly alongside both 6th gen jets and previous generation fighter jets. Those drones will be bought in large numbers possibly numbering over a thousand airframes in a mere decade. The Air Force will keep buying the F-35A, though for now annual procurement figures don't seem as if they will rise much. The US Congress has at times said they would prefer 70-something F-35s per year for the Air Force, but the Air Force wishes to siphon its funds elsewhere. That's a bit hard though when Congress sometimes mandates additional F-35s, as well as delays the retirement of certain plane types. As Congress often gets its way, it's unlikely even most of the planned retirements will go through. F-22s and A-10 retirements are looking particularly unlikely. 
there's a bunch of other projects like weapons that are being developed, but let's leave those for some other video. The Air Force today is heavily invested in new technology. It's literally in a race against another military superpower, China, and it seems determined to keep ahead of it and not let its leading position slip away. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.